Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2384. Why don't these match? They look the same. Hey, welcome back to Mr. Excel Netcast. I'm Bill Jell, and this is a question that comes up all the time. All the time. And in this case, it was for this episode 2104 about sinking slicers. Uh, they're saying, hey, it's not working. And the problem, when they send me the file, I always have them send me the file. And the problem is they have two lists of data that look the same, but the items aren't really the same. Sometimes Excel fools you. You, you see things that that appear to be the same and they're not, all right? So in that episode, we had a data set over on the left-hand side and you needed to create a list, a tiny little table, one column table of all of the unique items there, right? And there's a second list and um, both lists have to have uh, the products there in column L. So when this starts not working, the first thing I wanna know is do they really match? Really match, so I'm gonna use a extra column here called equal match, go look for fig, over in this list right here, I press F4, so that way I lock that down, comma zero for an exact match. And a six, that's good, that means that it's there. It tells me it's in the sixth row, I don't care what row it's in, right? I just wanna know, am I getting a number or not? All right, and we're gonna see some here that are NA. So for some reason, plum is here, and plum is here, and it says they don't match, right? And when that happens, here are the steps that I go through. First thing I wanna do is I wanna grab the value from the left-hand side, and I wanna grab the value from the right-hand side, similar formula there, and see if, in fact, they're matching, right? And so equal F4 equal G4, it says they're not. All right, are there trailing or leading spaces? That happens a lot, all right? So the first thing I checked is what's the length of this item for, what's the length of this item for? All right, so we know it's the same number of characters. It's not an issue with the space. Then I break it down character by character so we can compare each character. So equal mid of this. Now I'm not gonna press F4 just once because that would lock it to column F, but I press it a second time, F dollar sign four. That way I'm always pointing at row four, uh, but it's allowed to move to the right when I copy it over to column G. And then which character do I want? I want the character one. But if I type to one there, then I'd have to edit the next form. It'll be two, three, four, five, six. So a sneaky little thing that we do here is a row of A1. Some people put rows, some people put row one colon one, whatever you wanna do, or a length of one, and that should give us a capital P. We'll copy that down uh, long enough to handle the longest value in the list, right? And we have plum and, pl uh, yeah, I can already see it. But here, let's just do a little test here. Equal this is equal to that. And it's not, right? So this plum is P-L-U-M. This plum is not P-L-U-M, it's P-1-U-M. Uh, if you can't see it for some reason, uh, then ask for the code that tells us the ASCII character code of those items, all right? And what we're seeing is that we have an 80 and an 80, that's a capital P, but a 108 on the left, lowercase l, and a 49, which is a one. Why would there be a one there? You have to be a certain age. I'm going back to Mrs. Marhefka's typing class in 10th grade, uh, where we actually learned how to type on typewriters. And back then, there was no one key. I am not making this up. There was no one key on the keyboard. When you need to type a one, you just went to a lowercase l. So people of a certain age, they still touch type by pressing the l instead of a one. Luckily, you know, I, I was never a good typer. I didn't learn that trick and it's not an issue for me, but I see that happen, right? So we're just gonna come through here, control H, and we're gonna replace every occurrence of one with a lowercase l, replace all. All right, made six replacements. Beautiful, that fixed a lot of them, but hey, now here's one. Uh, it says that nectarine is not over in the other list. What's up with that? So here, we grab this one, equal nectarine, and then equal nectarine. Ah, here we are. So length of 10, length of nine. So this one doesn't have a trailing space. This one, for some reason, does. Now, if I had a bunch of these, I would use the trim function. Insert a new column, equal trim. Enter, copy, paste as values. But in this case, I'm just going to backspace. All right, and then here, muskmelon. Muskmelon is not... Uh, match. So we'll take a look at those. So we'll grab muskmelon from the left-hand side, bring it over into our little uh, test area here. All right, they're both 10 characters, so that's not the issue. 
uh, M, U, S, K, those are all the same. I'll copy my formula down a little bit more here. Oh, look at that. Oh, this one, this one, <laughs> this one started happening back in about 1997. Uh, spaces, spaces. There's two spaces that you see a lot in Excel. When you just type a space bar, you get a character 32, the character 32 here. But if the data came from the internet, it's likely a character 160. That's called a non-breaking space. So for whatever reason over here, this data, uh, muskmelon, that came from the internet. Uh, and we need to get rid of that weird space and type a regular space and things start to work. All right, so three different things we found there. Someone typed a one instead of an L. Uh, someone put trailing spaces at the end, and then uh, character 160 space. Now that's if you have text. Uh, when you're trying to match numbers, I've seen all sorts of things where you would swear the numbers are the same, but it turns out that they're not. So here we're just gonna test if the number on the left is the same as the number on the right. And in all of these cases, they are not. All right, so let's take a look at the top one up here. We have 68 and 68, how can not, those not be a match? When I look over in column C, it's 68, but here it's 68.25, and they used decrease decimal. A fast way to see all these at once is go to formulas and choose show formulas. Great shortcut key, control and accent E goo. It's on the US keyboard just above the tab. It has a tilde and an accent, backwards accent. Press that, and you'll see the uh, decimals are in there, but not being revealed. All right, next group down here. Um, this is funny. People get so focused on the data, they will look at this 68 and the 0.68 and they'll swear they're the same thing. Obviously, they're not. Uh, here's one. It was actually more digits than this. A guy showed up in one of my seminars. He had these two data sets. He's like, hey, my VLOOKUP's not working. And when I looked, he was really studying the number of decimal places, 26.859, 26.859. But this one was negative and for the life of him, he could not see the problem. Uh, another one with dates. Dates are tricky things, uh, and here, if we go into show formulas mode, these all look the same. These all look the same. Show formulas, you see that this is 48382. That's the serial number over here, 44323. Uh, and what ha had happened is this is July 5th, 2021, a U.S. date. This, however, is May 7th, but it's formatted as a European date instead of month, day, year, day, month, year and they look the same, but they're not the same in Excel. So my purpose in making this video is to help the person where the sync slicers is not working. I really want you to go through this process here and then repeat that really match column over on the other data set, going back into your slicer table to try and figure out which ones aren't matching and then break it down why they aren't matching. I don't think I've ever done a video of this before. I always just have people send me a file and then I get hidden away in a dark, cave somewhere and use this method. So now I can at least point people back to this is the method I use to try and figure out which character is the bad one and then using the code uh, to figure out exactly what the problem is. Well, I hate tips like this are my book, Mr. Excel 2020. Click that eye in the top right hand corner for more information. Please, if you like these tips, like, subscribe and ring the bell. Feel free to post any questions or comments down in the comments below. Well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast. Mr. Excel.